Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1949 Dodge running. We interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to tell you guys that this video is sponsored by Simply Safe. Stay tuned for more information on Simply Safe and the products that they offer. Now, back to your regular scheduled programming. So we picked this up at a farm auction, the Mopar Madman and I, we're going to cut back to that and then we'll jump right back into this. Today we're at the Ralph Family Estate Auction and we're buying junk. The Mopar Bandit, he bought junk. Super trucker, twister, how are you going to get that home you got no trailer? So he picked up this 63 Chevrolet Bel Air after he found out last night that uh, the fenders won't fit his 64. The doors do look the same though. So he's putting the uh, grippers on because it's almost winter and you need all the traction. But yeah, let's look at all the other stuff we missed out on. Looks like a G-body cutlass, bucket seats console, rallies, channel like that. What's this? Uh, Yoda? Yeah. Pudding things. Oh, it even had the tow bar on the front. And tow hook. Don't kick that too hard. 53 Ford. Two door post. Fortunately, most of these cars went for well below scrap value. Some of them didn't, but anyway, they're rough. And this was a not very well advertised sale. Buick with the Dynaflow. Got the aluminum visor on it. Is that like a 51-ish? Chevy Love, 65 Ford Custom. I like the taillights on the Customs. 63 Ford, wrong side box on it. Sweet bug deflector. Chevy Mikado, GMC like the one we have. This is a three quarter ton. This was actually the Mopar Bandit's neighbors. He said he remembered this thing being around. And that hitch on the front. I don't know if that was for putting his boat in the lake or what. I wonder if this thing had a big block in it. It does have the fancy stainless windows and trim around the glass. Automatic. 76-ish Ford, four-wheel drive half ton. These dent sides are all real rough, but for iron price, you know, they got nine inches in the back. That's probably worth what the guys paid for them, but I think they're going to scrap. 39 Chevrolet, again rough, but there's pieces there like, shoot, driver's door is a little rotten on the bottom, but I think this tin grill, Mopar over here went for 160 bucks. She's pretty chewy, but oh, it's a Fury model. What the heck? It's pretty much beat, like everything is here. Beat, pieces missing, titles were nowhere to be found there's about 70 ish cars most of them from the 50s but there was some 60s and 70s stuff as well you can see they're pretty much cleaning everything out there had to have been 60 70 tractors here as well 75 20s there's like five of those four-wheel drive 75 20s uh, 110 round fender john deere pretty rough shape went for like 300 bucks a couple of g john deere diesels this was the only square body here. There's a 56 Ford truck over there that wasn't too bad, had a loose Y block in it. That went for like 360 bucks. Had a pretty nice grill in it, nice cab, but we only had two spots. Looks like a Chevrolet four cylinder. I don't know if it's Chevy or not, but she's rough. This Dodge is pretty cool, old military rig. Um, has all kinds of switches and heavy duty military stuff inside. Eight lug, three quarter or one ton. There was another square body S dime, regular cab long box that everybody loves for their chassis swaps. Putting his little dots in here. Oh boy, she's rotten. 
like a 56 7 buick and this thing was just packed full of hubcaps top to bottom i hope somebody got this and is gonna go through that stuff like there's a mercury in there wide five ford old mercury i mean they're rough but there's pieces that a guy could use plymouth chrysler buick but this thing's just packed to the roof. What a shame. I hope it get crushed. Got the three portholes in it. No motor tranny. So let me get the grill emblem. I think it's a 58 Ford, 59. No rear end. Oh, it does have the early 9 inch in it. So that would have been a good score. Early General Motors truck. I would say like 37, 8, 9. Rambler, four door, 46784, Ford, There's something with the park lights, can't remember what it is. I looked under all these, no Columbias, so that's a kind of a bummer. This was where my Dodge car was sitting. Ooh, it does have the spotlight, swanky. Square body, full size hubcap. This is the 58 Ford, again, nice early narrow nine inch, 223.6. Another Rambler, like a 49 Chevy. 63 Ford Custom, four-door. 65 or six Ford long box, dump truck. And this is the, the Plymouth Arrow Sport. It was like the Dodge, or the Plymouth version of the Dodge D50s, which I think were made by Mitsubishi. Kind of a cool looking rig, but chewy. Oh, that's a 57, big job. Archie Campbell Incorporated Ranch, Warwick, North Dakota. I saw these portholes were freaking sweet on those big jobs and those big fenders. 67 Chevy. There's a couple of good pieces on here, but every panel is whammied. I think this only brought a couple hundred bucks. Two more Ramblers. Oh, it's the Cross Country Custom. Dang, and unfortunately, most of these cars were full of crap. Well, I don't say unfortunately, but there might be some good stuff in there, but probably not. Another uh, 46, 48 Ford, two-door sedan. Pretty much all there, but again, big project. Most of these were all parts cars, if a guy was to get them. Oh, it's a, what is a V8? Super Deluxe. Top for a 94 carburetor. I'm guessing the one under the hood's missing too. Small engines. Looks like that guy came out all right. Got himself a bench for the vise. And some bent fence posts. All right, ready for sandwiches? We done with this or what? Oh, Chuck Norris, the door. How come, how come your car isn't all full of crap? The, the Binford, North Dakota Jubilee. June 11th through 15th, 1956. Ooh, look, a fresh sandwich can in here. Wagon luggage rack with all the stainless. LTD, oh, the door still shuts good. Really good, yeah. Oh, and a title. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Plus he found the title for the 64 Dodge that he bought here like three years ago, two years ago. So what do you got going on up front here? Did you bring two more? No, I'm just gonna try to get the dirt and stuff out. The one in a million, the tires actually take air. So well. <laughs> Here's what I got, 48 to 50 Ford, F1. Better give this to Mopar, man, I think he's already got one. Radiator, right we'll get a couple bucks out of that. Is that about a 930 case? Hey, here you go. Your your Biscayne can now identify as a Impala. Nice. Yeah, he picked up a 64 two-door post. And so he's gonna use this as a parts car. But knowing him, he's not gonna use it as a parts car. He's just gonna use this car because nothing daily. <laughs> nothing daily. Daily, nothing can go for parts. And this, I don't even know what it is. We think it's like a 49 or 50 Dodge. So a little backstory on this one, the Mopar Madman and I. We went up to a farm auction. We'd been in this yard before, many years before the auction. Uh, he bought a couple cars there. I bought some other trinkets and stuff. This car was there. We saw it had two tailpipes coming out the back. And I'll show you why that piqued our curiosity. It's got Duff just itching to know. All right. So what is Simply Safe? Well, Simply Safe is what you use when you got a dog that 
goes and licks the intruders and shows them where all your faulty starters are at. You don't want that. You don't want your starters disappearing. You don't want anybody to take the shop or anything that's in it. So Simply Safe is what you need. Simply Safe is a product that you can install yourself in little to no time at all. Simply Safe is currently offering its holiday deals of 40% off or more. There's never been a better time to make your home safe. In less than an hour, I set up the shop with door sensors, window sensors, glass breaking sensors, temperature sensors so that if the pipes freeze they let me know, carbon monoxide sensors so that we don't get smoked out in here, and there's all kinds of other things they offer. They've got a doorbell that's got a camera in it, they've got outside cameras, they've got inside cameras, they've got motion sensors. Also, not only is it easy to set up, it's super reasonably priced. There's a link down below that offers a great discount to Simply Safe and the products that they offer. It's very reasonable for the system. It's very reasonable each month. And there's even an opportunity to get a discount on your insurance by installing their products. So check that out with your insurance agent. Check out Simply Safe down below. So some of the other things that Simply Safe offers, other than a peace of mind, is like I said, there's a water sensor. So in case your water heater breaks and you got water on the floor or you got a hole in your roof or your pipes freeze, it notifies Simply Safe. Simply Safe will notify you that there's an issue. If there's an intruder, they'll notify you. They'll notify the local authorities. If the temperature drops below freezing in your shop, it lets you know, or your home if you're gonna put it in your home. Carbon monoxide, smoke detector, they'll notify you get you out of here safely and they'll notify the local fire department as well. Motion sensors so that there's an alarm that goes off or a siren so that it notifies the intruder that they better get the heck out of here and Duff's gonna be chasing them on their heels getting them out of here as well and then they're not gonna be getting out of here with your goods. It's all wireless, it works through your Wi-Fi. You can add on things as you go. There's a keypad for the front door. You can have a keypad for your deadbolt. There's key fobs you can use to get in and set the system and alarm the system and disarm the system. So it's pretty much everything that you could ever want in a security system and it's super easy to install. Have I said that? Yeah, even a dumb dumb like me can install it. Duff had no problem helping me do it. No thumbs required. Just kidding, you probably need thumbs to install it. So. Click the link down below. The door sensors and window sensors, super easy to install. They just gotta be within two inches of one another. As soon as the door opens, light comes on and it tells the home base that the door is open. As soon as you close it, lights up twice, tells you the door is closed. Same thing on windows. Got this super easy to install sensor right here for the temperature. You just stick that right to your wall or your door or wherever you want it. I got it close to the bathroom because that's where we got water that we don't want freezing. Right, Duff? We got our carbon monoxide alarm so that we don't get chooched out of the shop. Here's our keypad. It's got super easy to read screen, walk through instructions how to set everything up. I can arm it for when I'm home. Turns off basically the motion sensors inside. Away so that the motion sensors are on on the inside. And then I can also turn it off. I gotta put it in my pin. Shoot. So you might ask, well, why Mortski? You got Duff for protection. Why would you need home security? Well, the thing is, if you come in here with treats, you're probably gonna be able to bribe Duff because he's pretty easy to bribe. We don't want anybody making off with our broken starters, so that's why we got Simply Safe. So I guess to sum it all up, why do I like Simply Safe? Super easy to install, super reasonable prices, and if anybody were to come into the shop when Duff and I weren't around, we're out chasing junk down. They notify the local police, so don't come knocking down our doors trying to steal our broken starters because Simply Safe's got us covered. Right, Duff? Yeah. So click the link down below or log on to www.simplysafe.com slash Mordsky Repair. Save 40% or more on your Simply Safe security system during their holiday sale. Visit simplysafe.com slash Mordsky Repair to learn more. Now back to your regular scheduled programming. So this is a 1949 Dodge Cornet is the top of the line. And then, what is it, Meadowbrook down in here. And it's, it goes by trim levels. And I looked at all the 49 Dodge pictures and I can't see any difference in trim. The other thing about this thing is, there's supposed to be trim here, trim down the hood, trim down there. 
that looks like it's just been whatever fell off but these holes been filled haven't they duff and then these back here so that's interesting but so what got me back here is it's got dual exhaust this car should be a flathead six cylinder we love flatheads six cylinders too and should only be single exhaust that's an interesting hitch duff not bad welds stacking dimes last on the road in 65 those are uh, sioux falls south dakota license plates which is weird because this thing is like an hour from canada got our walking boots if we get her running oh my nails oh wonder how many of these fell out on the road on the way home sorry i'm sorry looks like it was kind of a dark ish blue originally they're kind of neat tail lights i mean it's neat i don't love them by any means somebody jumped on the roof so there's a nice pond up there back windows knocked out side glasses bb gunned up oh yeah there's kind of navy blue that it was duff how gross is this super gross so the other thing we notice it's got a floor shift three speed should have been column shifted and it's got that gauge on the dash stuart warner temp gauge that's pretty neat that's pretty neat uh, no keys of course does have a radio kind of a different style dash at the uh three gauges there back seat doesn't look like it had uh, overdrive. Here's the hood pop inside the car. Kind of neat for 49. I don't think GM had that till like the 70s. It's got bumper guards. I don't know if they all came with that. I just, like I said, I was trying to figure out what base model or what trim package this was. Is that lead or is that mud? That's definitely mud duff. So this was somebody's pride and joy. They put some work into her. It's actually relatively solid and straight. You know, show them the money. What do you guys bets we got under here? Hemi, right? You're getting pretty good at opening those up, Duff. Atta boy. Oh, she is a hybrid. Electric and gas. Dual horns. Six volt battery. Speaking of dual horns, dual carbs. It's got the Fenton fuel log. Oh, it's got the Wittick thumb screw hose clamp. Red hose for the fuel lines. Red spark plug wires. And of course, this spark plug is snapped off. Great. Yeah, that's what got us excited for this car. The dual car. What are you just chewing on the side of my car? What's in there? Yeah, I've never seen where they had like a strap in between the two air cleaners. Yeah, these did not come with dual carbs. And it's an Edmunds intake, which Edmunds are freaking the coolest looking intakes. Edmunds and Tatterfields are freaking the cat's pajamas, I think. So chrome oil breather does it have oil in it is this the dipstick probably not nope where's the dipstick jimmy, dipstick, jimmy. throttle linkage oh yeah that's custom made all brazed together can't see if it's a aftermarket manifold or if they just cut up the stock one and split it because that's what a lot of guys would do we'll find out Oh man, those fuel lines are stiff. It looks like the distributor cap is off. The rotor is missing. So that ain't good. I'll have to find one of those. Oh, there's the dipstick. Oh. Oh no. She is bone dry. Oh, I think I'd rather have it over full and have something in there than being bone dry like that look at this stack of adapters to get that Stuart Warner temp gauge on there yowza one two three four five fittings to get that and it still barely clears the throttle yeah that's 
loose there. Those carbs are frozen. So that's kind of cool how it pulls out, pulls this way, and then you get this lever and it rocks those back and forth. Interesting. Those are Carter's. Oh, that's a Chrysler carburetor. The back one is anyway. That one no marking. That's one thing if you're gonna pick somebody's stuff apart and they got multiple carburetors, go look and see if they all match. Especially in these old conversions. Like those two carburetors, while they do the same thing, they are not matching. This one, like I said, this is Chrysler right on it. What is it? Bill and Ball Carburetor Company? I don't know. Also, they took the choke out of this one and then they just ran one carburetor for the choke. A lot of times other guys will just run the link, they'll just have one carburetor as a dummy. They won't even hook a fuel line up to it or they'll plug the fuel line and they'll plug the intake as well. And then they'll just run off one carburetor and you can usually look at the linkage and tell if they're cheating. Usually when guys have three carburetors, you'll see that. Just running off the center carburetor. But then sometimes when you've got multiple carburetors, like a tri-carb progressive setup, You'll just run on the center carburetor for, you know, idling and running around town. And then when you get her WFO, that's when it kicks open the front and rear carburetors, kind of like a four barrel does. More useless information for you. There's our hybrid inline heater hose, heater thinger. They did make aluminum heads for these things as well. Just a two blade fan. No wonder they had to put a temp gauge in it. Well, let's see if it turns over. Oh, not real fun. Oh, but I don't think the water pump will even turn. Oh, maybe if we put it in gear and rock it. Shit! Stiff! What the battery is this? Well, we'll never know. Oh, she's a Dura start. Dolph said he put the transmission in gear. And the car rolls, but the fan don't move. So, what gear did you put it in? He said he referenced this floor shifter plate and uh, we think we got it in first, but we can only stick it in one gate. So we don't know if it's the two, three gate or the reverse first gate. Kind of a neat floor plate. Anywho, I'm gonna jack it up. Maybe the drive shaft's not in there or maybe that linkage is all hosed up on that aftermarket shifter. It's kind of a neat uh, floor mat. Got somebody's crest on there. Oh, look at the shifter boot even has reversed first, second, third on there. Fancy. This thing's pretty gross, stuff. Too gross for you even. What other goodies? Oh, that was a visor. A plastic visor. It even had seat belts. Man, they upgraded this thing. Cat's pajamas for 65 right here. Well, how many miles are on it? 48,913. You don't believe it's 48? You think it's broken? Or it's 148? I'm betting it's only got 48,000 on it. Some little old lady's car, and she died, and her grandkid got it and hopped it up in 1965. Want to bet? Okay. I'll jack it up and look at that shift linkage. Oh, that's the other thing we noticed. She's got exhaust cutouts, too. How neat is that? How neat is that? It's pretty neat, huh? You're itching to know what's wrong with the shift linkage. Okay, I'll get it up and see what uh, we got going underneath there. You grab the jack stands, I'll grab the jack. Deal. So we got her up in the air. Yes, I have jack stands. Man, there's some jack stand Nazis that like to comment. I don't know, I always use a jack stand. Maybe it's just not on camera, anywho. Freaking sway bar on this thing. You could see just how far in the dirt it was. Right, Duff? Oh, fudge. Oh, Duff found it. Can you see it, Duff? It's right above your head. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's going to be an issue. Wow. That's the bottom of the oil pan. That's the drain plug. That's why there's nothing 
in the oil pan. Well, the side pipes were functional at one time. They're now rusted out, but they were actually uh, plumbed in. This is where the one pipe ran back. Maybe some of this rust is why the shift linkage isn't working. No, it all looks like it's present. Looks like they cut the hole in the floor with a dull chisel. Not surprised. No overdrive. Doesn't have a torque tube. It's got a regular drive shaft, so that's good. Maybe. I don't know. The good news is, um, I think there's our oil pump pickup. We're going to need one of those. But the bottom end of the engine looks good. You know? Not like water got in there. Okay, scratch, scratch that. You see that? Up there? You see how you can see it looks like a spark plug boot or something? Uh, huh, well, oh, well, we've got a new discovery. See the light up there? I got that clamped to the distributor, which comes out the side of the engine block. You see that light right there? You shouldn't be able to see that. That's a gaping hole in the engine block. To further demonstrate, these are my fingers inside of said engine block. She's uh, windowed. Oh, there's uh, an escape hole in the oil pan as well right there. This is gonna be the world's shortest will it run. It pushed that block out so hard. I think it split it in two damn near. Blew that bolt out right there. Oh yeah, there's the, we almost have to pull this apart. So here's the oil pan rail in the back and here's the front, like those should be parallel. This whole block is split. Oh my gosh, wowza. Hmm. Oh, let's just forget about that hole in the oil pan or that it rotted through and the hole in the block and, and keep on keeping on. So it looks like they got an external oil pump. Well, that's kind of neat. Can you tell my enthusiasm is waning? Here's our exhaust manifolds. I'm guessing this is the stock one. And here's the original exit. Comes down here, splits off, goes out to the side exit. Also rotted off. Kind of like this one. And... Yeah, it kind of looks like they just welded on a, another flange onto those front couple of cylinders. I can't really show you guys. I'm sorry. So typically what these guys would do, they'd get two manifolds, the stock one, and then, well, two stock ones, and they'd cut the flange off of one and then cut a hole up ahead on the original manifold and weld it to it. And then usually they would put a block off plate so that the front cylinders ran off. One flange, back cylinders ran off this other flange. So yeah, not a cool aftermarket manifold. I mean, cool that somebody custom made it, but. <laughs> Holes in oil pans and blocks, not cool. Looks like there's a dent right there in the oil pan too. No bueno. Oh man. Oh, another terrible Mopar design. The shocks on these things go from the lower control arm to the upper control arm. So if you know anything about geometry, even if you don't, the upper control arm and lower control arm move together. So that shock really never does anything. Maybe travels like three quarters of an inch, the entire height of the suspension. So they make, a lot of guys will make a bracket that goes off the frame and then hooks to here. Then they work way more gooder. These cars do drive and steer and stop surprisingly well. I had a 51 Plymouth that I did that conversion on. Worked pretty good. Never mind that I put a 360 in it or 318 or whatever. Looks like they got a little twist in stud in the front spring to get a little more lift out of her. Oh yeah, the finest. So fine. Yeah, I don't think that fuel line's gonna do any good. Fuel hose, she's twisted in a couple circles. Definitely not gonna feed two carburetors. I'm guessing they uh, uncorked the headers and gave her a little too much meat and potatoes and that's when the uh, rod decided to exit stage left. No exit, stage left. I failed to mention it. The flexi hose. That's why this engine failed. The flexi hose just wasn't keeping her cool and uh, 
That's why the block decided to disintegrate. Self-destruct. Well, I think we're gonna harvest the intake and all that good stuff off this thing before we pull this engine out or whatever, because that's really what I want. So, yeah. This car reminds me of the Studebaker, because it's ugly and I hate it, and it has no paint on it. The good thing was that the Studebaker had like a brand new engine in it. I wish these carburetors were on that brand new Studebaker engine. Oh yeah, that carb is a little bit different there. Well, I'm gonna pull this stuff off. Wish me luck. Hopefully nothing breaks. This huge heater box is definitely in the way. So I've been messing with this thing for going on an hour and we're down to, there's a stud on each end of this manifold, one here, one over there, where it's just hanging up on that stud. Obviously dissimilar metals, steel being the stud, aluminum being this manifold, which I think this manifold was even polished at one time. This thing is freaking nice. And that's why I don't want to screw it up. I got to figure out a way to get that aluminum manifold off that stud, or that stud to turn, or that stud to come out without screwing up the manifold, breaking that ear off. You'll find a lot of these nice old manifolds with a broken ear or some welds or somebody screwed a port in it and uh, really ruins them for me. This is a ball and ball carburetor manufactured for Chrysler. And it says manufactured by Carter up top here. Also, this is a water-cooled manifold, so they tapped T's in here and then ran water through there. The stock ones did not have that. Well, not in this year, anyway, because those are definitely add-ons. I ended up taking this heater box out to give myself some room, and it still sucks. I got the exhaust manifold loose. That wasn't even what I was trying to do. I just, last resort, took it loose because of that. Well, maybe that's holding us up, but as you can see, the exhaust manifold is loose. The only thing holding that from coming out is, well, other than those rusty pipes down there, is getting this manifold out of the way. And you can see it wiggles just ever so slightly on the top here. And I don't, I got in there with a that Eastwood spot weld cutting whatever chisel. And I don't want to screw up the manifold. So and I tapped around those ports with a brass punch. Just not going well. 
off. So I think we're gonna have a couple sandwiches, think on it, come back tomorrow, because I don't wanna make any drastic decisions and screw something up here. So let's uh, slam a sandwich and think on it. What do you think, Duff? He thinks it's time to punch out for the night. I don't even want to know how many hours I spent getting this thing off and then Shin came over and says why don't you take that nut off and then we still had to pry on it because it was corroded around the stud here and I did get this front stud out welded a nut on it but there's no way to get at this one or that one and uh she's got a lot of hoover schneef going on inside there this bolt did break off on the manifold well actually on the block we couldn't get the exhaust manifold because that would hit the intake so it was great fun was had by all but i think we'll go underneath and we'll cut the exhaust pipes off sneak this out and then we'll be ready to go so here's that stud that i welded a nut on to back that out that was the front one you can see this crossover tube she's getting a little rusty and look at this sweet linkage they made that is a lot of brazing even added a gusset in there and look at it's adjustable on this end, little set screw. You can slide that in and out so you can get them both idle on the same. And I don't think the bottom was polished, but the rest of it was. I'm guessing they drilled this hole for the wipers. That's too bad, but I think this thing would clean up pretty good. Oh yeah, and some of these nuts were like a castle nut, but they're the other way. Like this went into a, I don't know, a tapered seat like a lug nut held it in place. And they had these great big thick washers behind them. Mopar stuff. Hopefully we can get that one to run so we can stick all this on there. So we got the exhaust off and Curiosity got the better of me, so I pulled the uh, lifter cover off. I don't know what you call it. And of course they got adjustable lifters. I was thinking that would tell me if it had a great big fat camshaft in it, which is why I did this, because I was like, oh, maybe it's got a good cam in it. And I noticed there's a big chunk of metal just hanging out in this, oh, I don't know what you call it, oil reservoir thing. That looks like a tooth. Maybe it's a head of a valve? Yeah, she's no good. But yeah, I can't tell if it's got a Chet Herbert's cam in it or an Isky maybe. Looks like they put a heat shield down here for uh, protecting the fuel pump, so didn't get that too hot. I'm guessing uh, this thing was pretty hot commodity in its day. Maybe not, maybe the guy thought he was, but. Yeah, there's uh, definitely some bad news going on in there. Oh, is that another chunk of metal? Nope, just debris. All kinds of goodness. That's pretty much the end of this thing. We got what we wanted off of it. Dang, the sun ain't even up yet. More man is getting after it today. He's on the wrong side of the street. No mask though, he's just admiring the cab over. Silly guy. What's that? We need to get back to work on the flathead? Oh, here's all wound up. All right. Oh, watch out for the bumper on this thing. Easy on the paint. All right, let's get back at her. Say hi. Good boy. We're going to pick up more junk. We're gonna go to Rigid Customs, see our buddy Eli there. And he's uh, working on a 47 Dodge. They're LS swapping it, street robbing it, doing whatever. So uh, we're gonna scoop it up because it's loose, allegedly. Oh, hey, look, 57 Chevy sitting on a rollback and a 56 four door. 
couple of them. DD Speed Shop, call out. DD Speed Shop, DD Speed Shop, DD Speed Shop. DD Speed Shop. DD Speed Shop. DD Speed Shop, DD Speed Shop. Don't worry. I don't think blue shoes will sell him. Oh, he's got like five four door sedans over there. We're just cruising around in blackie here because this thing is good. We're going to see if she'll haul a load. I'm sure it will. Oh, look, a limousine broken in half. Don't want to send that one over any jumps. All right, we'll see you guys when we get there. Blackie's good, right, Duff? Oh, yeah. What do we got, Duff? Looks like a Mopar Flathead 6 and a 3 speed. He even saved us the drive shaft. But he stole the yoke. Wired down and everything. Man, that's service. Yep, 3 speed. Oh, the master cylinder's built right into the bell housing. Mechanical starter solenoid. Oh, there's the universal joint, parts of it. He's just jamming out in there. Other kind of goodies he got here. Two wheel drive square body suburban. Oh, there's the front clip of the pickup. Hauling Rangers around. Oh, she's a Texas version. Oh, she'll fit good in the back of Blackie. Look at that. He even found the crank for it. How neat is that? Green fan. I always thought these had the coolest spark plug wire holders. Just rocking in here. So much room for activity. Oh, it even comes with the voltage regulator? Oh, I might take that off. <laughs> How about that sweet horn? horn <laughs> this frame rack's kind of getting in the way of his bench grinder. Did you build a new table just for this? I built that table a while ago. Is it adjustable? These, yeah. It's gonna be. All the tools are the What year is this thing? 46. 46. Oh, Mopar things. The, Lug bolts instead of studs. All the Dodge purists will probably hate me when it's done. So. Oh, we won't mention the LS and the Mustang. And... <laughs> oh, save these shock mounts. I'm gonna save that whole front axle. Power straight make, make yourself a pickup box trailer anyway. Right. Rear steer. Oh yeah. Well, I figured you might want the voltage regulator. It looks like it's it, like it looks like the newest part of the whole rig. Exactly. That's kind <laughs> of oh, you cut the harness. Oh, but you saved? No, oh, oh, dang yeah. it, the end fell off. That's you tried real hard though. I tried, yeah. Oh. It's gonna be real nice to you. What a guy. Yeah, this thing is dry. So is this, did this guy know the history on it at all? This is wife's dad's pickup. That's why it's getting done. He didn't know when it run last? It had like 18 gallons of fuel in it. It was plump full and he said it had plates on it. It not that long ago. They were collector plates, weren't they? Yeah. Minnesota. It was, it was driving them not that long ago. <laughs> not that long ago usually <laughs> means 10 years. <laughs> Every time. Right. You got so much room for activities now. There's no LS's in here. There's no Chevelles. Right. No rat rods. Just one lonely LS harness. Oh, you knocked the tranny mount off. We need to make some clearance, Clarence. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? So we're gonna pull her out, clearance them up a bit. This side is right on there.
Looks like I cut all right up there, but I got a clearance a little bit more in the back. I didn't center it very well. Well, I should have trimmed further back on that side. Looks like on this side as well. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, just ruining trucks. <laughs> All right. Duff Dog. Oh, man, he's coming back again, Duff. Oh, taking his letters up to mail them. It's nice weather ain't going to be around forever, though. Going to have to get some different slippers to wear. Well, since we got the good parts off that engine, let's see if this engine's worth putting it on. So some of the things I noticed, uh, this is a top shift transmission. Comes in the top, the shifter, and the uh, crap box over here. What's that one, Duff? She's a side shift. So the shift linkage goes in the side. And the bell housing on this one's got all these integral Brackets for the clutch and the brake and all that that car doesn't so Anyway differences between a pickup and a car 49 versus 46 allegedly. I don't know Park brakes also built into the transmission. It's got this band that clamps around the drum Stops your drive shaft from spinning usually on cars. It's just park brake cables going to the Brake drums on the back, which we usually cut off. Does my information bore you Duff? Oh, yeah does have hydraulic brakes. It's got the mechanical lever that engages your starter solenoid right here. Well, it doesn't really have a solenoid. I don't know. Do you still call that a solenoid? Starter switch, probably. We got to plug this oil line. I'm guessing that went to the gauge inside. I'm guessing that was the temp gauge. I don't think we'll have to plug that. Looks like part of it's still in there. The head is labeled heater for the heater hose. The heater hoses are kind of... I don't know, I suppose these went inside for the heater. But this one loops around, goes into the block. Oh, look at how they doubled it up so it didn't rub through. Very nice. Whoa, whoa, very nice. And then the other heater hose comes off the thermostat housing with way too long of clamps. Wow, that's like a three inch clamp on an inch and a quarter hose. We're gonna have to find some spark plug wires because those are all chewed off. Looks like Eli cut those off. Looks like they chewed into this wire going down to the distributor. Uh, also, this thing was 6 volts, so the coil isn't going to work, so we're going to have to hook a 12-volt coil up. We should be able to find out which one number one is pretty easy, because the way these things kind of hold everything in place, number one's going to be over here. So we just tug on that. Boom, there's our number one. That'll be easy. It does have a chrome oil filler neck sweet oh she's a hybrid look at that it's got the head bolt block heater and then you just plug your extension cord into that that's pretty neat that's pretty neat what else six volt generator green fan stamp steel engine mount fuel pump that's surely dried up oh yeah that's right the mopars the floating power they were really proud of this stuff. Didn't that uh, 59 Plymouth have that too? What's this say, Duff? Oh yeah, that was floating power too. Oh, this engine might have been swapped. Is that part of another mount that's they left on there when they put this mount? I don't know, Mopar was really proud of the floating power. They do have marks on the front pulley for 
Setting your timing. Use a light on it. But we don't use no stinking timing lights, do we? Nah. Oil bath, air cleaner, downdraft carburetor. This exhaust manifold is a little bit different than our other one. Not for the fact that it's only got one exhaust port, but because it kind of comes out to the side here instead of just dropping straight down. Carburetor, is it Lewis? Ouch. Maybe, maybe not. Oh no, oh yeah, she's loose. Six cylinder throttle linkage is always intriguing because the gas pedal's over there. It's got to come down over here, over this way, up, ahead, up, and then wiggle shaft that goes the opposite direction as your gas pedal goes. So usually those are all janked up. What are you doing? Eating the weeds that are falling out of that car? You got food in your dish. Goofball. So I think first thing we'll uh, hook a battery up. See if the starter works. We know it turns over. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Now you're gonna eat the pallet? Don't eat the pallet. Well, she's a six volt starter, so we're just gonna hook it up. Negative ground. It'll be fine. Just a daily occurrence. Yep, same pajamas. No mask today though. Put gloves on. He needs some taller socks. I tell you what, we'll have to get him some for Christmas. What do you think, Duff? Don't you love getting socks for Christmas? Looks like we got uh, Florida Man as our sponsor this week. Yeah, he's been holding up good. Right, Duff? Of course, both cables are red, because why wouldn't they be? We might need a locking players to lock that one in place. Right. See if she turns over. Oh, we should plug that oil line. We should check the dipstick, Jimmy, to see if it's got oil to push out that line. Where would that be? Oh, right there. Looks pretty thin. That's pretty neat. It tells you the capacity of five quarts. Full, run level, half. Well, that's cool. If she's down to there, you had a half quart. That's where you want to run at. And that is peak all the way at full. Cool stuff, Mopar. Well, here goes nothing. We get our gear so we don't get hit with a universal joint. It sounds like it's got pretty good compression. Let's see if we got spark. This wire looks safe enough to use, Duff. Not really. Extruder goes to the negative side of the coil. We're using our nice Paul coil that came off our latest 60 Impala. Should say it came off the 60 Impala. It came with it. What do you think, Duff? We got spark? Yeah, probably not. How about now? Alright, now I gotta turn that over and hold this at the same time. You wanna hold it? Put it on your nose? Just kidding, you don't wanna do that. It's animal cruelty. No sparky spark! Pop the cap off. Alright, give me the old Mortsky flick. These points look like new! No sparkage in there, Duff. Why is that? Oh yeah! Got all kinds of spark now. Gosh dang, rotor looks like new. Inside the cap, not so new. Scratch these contacts up a bit and throw that back on. So we got some Federal spark plug wires, part number 2612, Henshaw and Mexico. It says these are for a GM in line six, 230, 235, 292. Hopefully they work for what we need. Ooh, they might not be long enough. We shall see. Oh yeah, that's no bueno. Well. Looks like we're going to be looking for some V8 plug wires. Back to the drawing board. Oh, that's right. 
Spark plugs on a GM inline six come out the side. So does the distributor, so they don't have very far to go. Idiot! Idiot! Right, Duff? Should have known better. Hopefully we got some for GM V8 points. Those are longer. So it looks like we're fresh out of GM points plug wires. We got this random Ford distributor cap. We'll steal them off this. We could steal them off that car, but those things are pretty brittle. <laughs> Duff, Duff says, yeah, they're brittle. Right? Duff, so, what's firing our uh, inline six? 15 is too young, 36 is too old, 24 is just right. And we're assuming that this turns clockwise. So we could check quick. That wouldn't be any fun though. Oh, it's got champion plugs in it. Nothing but the finest. One. Sure enough. Five. She's a standard cat. It's a good cat. Yeah. Wish I knew which Ford it came off of. I'm guessing it's a 400. Plug wires. Standard motor products as well. Uh, coil up. That would be good. I guess now we just gotta give her a tickle of the old hot sauce and see the lights off. Can't be that easy, can it? Maybe we'll put the camera over there. Did you hear that, Duff? Did it wake you up? I hope we don't have any stuck valves. Oh, I'll put my hand there. nest in that manifold kind of looks like it oh man party foul knock the ham and cheese over seem like she's running real smooth. She's alive after 10-ish years. Maybe we'll pull those plugs out. See if we got a cylinder with a stuck valve. It runs though. I'll take it. Drink to that, won't you Duff? He's not impressed. He knew it was gonna run. Good old champion J8Cs, they all look pretty good too. All right, compression time.
Sure enough, nothing on six. Looks like the exhaust valve stuck open. Dang it, it's always something. Yep, exhaust valve ain't closing on six. You just can't win with these flatheads. For the intake, the valve is literally right below the piston, so we could spray some squirrel piss on it, tap on it, but nope. Can't get at the exhaust. Guess we'll pull another flathead head. Super. Do you feel sorry for me? Do you feel sorry for Greta? Yeah, me either. What little coolant we caught was pretty rusty. snap down so as I was pulling the head off I just barely bumped this exhaust valve and she snapped shut you could see that it wasn't working building any compression because looks like this is uh, some shag carpet Duff what do you think shag carpet yeah definitely shag carpet anywho yeah cylinder walls look good no just kidding there's a pretty good ring ridge there so yeah Let's uh, clean this up a bit. Put some head gasket in a can on that head gasket. Clean the head up. Again, looks pretty good, but there's not a whole lot going on there. What does that say? MO621 or MC. Is that a McCord gasket? I don't know. Well, we should probably clean up the top of a piston, see if she's ever been bored out. You wanna clean that up for me, Duff? He has zero interest in the Mopar Flathead 6s. Interesting fact, the valve that we're always snapping off on the intro to all my videos is a 230 inline Plymouth from that 59 Plymouth station wagon. So let's try not to recreate that. So everything cleaned up pretty good. I did notice the top of the pistons, this front cylinder has an A on it, and every single one of the other ones has a B, so I think it's standard bore. There is a pretty good ridge, so that would make sense that this is a 1946 engine that's never been ripped into, bored out anyway. I'm guessing it's had a valve job or something since then. Or maybe it's really low hours, who knows? So now I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, zing it over a few times, make sure all the valves are doing what they're supposed to do, but then we'll just uh, clean up the super scraper and do the head gasket in a can. Do the same thing with the head. Throw her back together. Duff will be barely done with supper by then. All right, so we get her all slammed back together. I have to be somebody who's used the most head gasket in a can. I mean, I gotta be in the top 10 in the nation. That can's about gone. It's like the third can in the last year. Anywho, I did steal a head bolt out of this thing. 
because this one had that block heater, which is this guy here. This sits down in the coolant down there. And yeah. So anyway, I know I should have cleaned those up and put some sealant on the head bolts, but I also should have put a new head gasket in. So we're just gonna see how it works. Then we'll address that later. Also, we need a gasket here. And I was looking at these sweet hose clamps. Oh, I probably screwed those up too. Uh, I don't know if you guys can pick this up. It's got the IH for International Harvester. I didn't know International Harvester had their own hose clamps. Would you just look at it? Oh, go figure. Look at that. Oh, look it. at that. Yeah, I wish I had a boat tank here, but I think one is in that 60 Impala and one's in the 67 Impala. And it's getting late, so let's just see if she pops off and then we'll call her a night. Let's hear it pop off because we know it's going to run. That valve wasn't even that stuck. That sucks. Well, it doesn't suck. It just sucks we had to take it all apart for basically nothing. Well, let's say you duff. It's going to run a lot smoother when it's running on all five. I concur. Bottle shaft's leaking, oh, of course. Here goes nothing. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Smoother. Use up all our gas. Oh yeah, sounds like it's what thirteen percent better. What a hundred divided by six is. Good for tonight. Tell me get some fuel hooked up to it. Okay? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna have a sandwich. Maybe open a door. Put some carbon monoxide. Yeah. You want a sandwich? You want out too. I think we'll call it a success. So we uh, took a break to do some other things. That's right. We still got that and we're working on it. No, we haven't been working on the Jeepster. But I went out in the dark, in the snow, with stuff to protect me from the critters, and we stole the boat tank out of the 67. Pretty sure something has re-inhabited it in the week it's been sitting over there. Now we're going to see if this thing will run on its own. Duff looks thoroughly optimistic. Right? Okay. Now let's see what happens. Well, let's see if our fuel pump works. Because clearly that's an issue around here. You don't want me to... Black is the negative, though. I know the cable's red. It'll be fine. I promise. I don't think it's working. Uh, one big one. Come on, let's pump. Stug her up a bit. I think we got it. Never mind that that fuel leak is right by the exhaust manifold. It's probably gonna be shooting flames out. Forget to run. I've had a good fire in a while. Should probably get the hose ready. Oh sh! I'm getting fuel out to the carbonator. We're not getting fuel into the carburetor. Well, maybe we are. Just not coming out the accelerator pump. Surely that can't be dried up. I tell you what, let's uh, try her anyway. See what happens. Go for a coil. Yeah, let's give her a little hot sauce. See what happens, I guess. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Ah, the 
the tip of the fan and the tip of my finger met. And the fan is much stronger than the tip of my finger. We should turn the idle up a bit. Give it all the idle. Don't do that again. It's definitely going to need an accelerator pump. Where can I not lose my finger at? Not want me to adjust the idle. Sounds pretty alright though. Not sure why it only runs for so long and then runs out. Runs out of fuel maybe? I don't know. say she sounds pretty good. Now we gotta figure out uh, what we do next. Because as you can see we kind of did some rearranging in here and the Dodge car went outside. And uh, I think it's pretty chewy. And we have to change a lot of stuff to put this in there. Bell housing, transmission, engine mount, the uh, floating power engine mount. We did notice that's all busted up. So I think it's gonna go back in there. We might have a surprise for you. We're gonna open the door and let the uh, carbon monoxide out of here. Think about it. That enough? All right, talk to me about it. Let's unlock this battery cable. So, uh, let's be fire free in 2021. Oh wait, we already ruined that. Never mind. 2022. That's the year. No fires. See how many months in we can make it. Pushing a little smoke out of the top of the water pump. Let's get some fresh air, huh, Duff? I'm gonna go hit the door. Perfect. Tech tip of the day, don't lose your finger in a fan. Keep your hands away from moving parts. Didn't uh, quite cut my finger off. No blood even, but uh, she's a little numb, Duff. I'm gonna have to numb the pain with some sandwiches. So, I think the uh, flathead was a success. Well, this one, maybe not so much the other one. Unfortunately, I I've stated what I think of the car and Duff won't even go inside it, so really no point swapping this in there. Here's what I am thinking. We're gonna fog this down. And if those of you don't know what fogging it down is, my method is to get it running, get it warmed up a bit, just drizzle a little ATF down the intake. It leaves a smoky white haze that goes across the countryside. And basically what that does is it gets ATF everywhere. I mean, from the throat of the carburetor to the tip of the exhaust. So that means in the valves, in the pistons, inside the carburetor, everywhere. And you know how the valves like stick on these? Yeah, every time we get a flathead, it's got a stuck valve. Well, hopefully that'll keep these from sticking until I need it. That being said, it's really cold out. It's uh, about five degrees above Fahrenheit right now. So you can hear the snow squishing underneath your boots. It squeaks when it gets real cold. Those of you in Hawaii and Florida probably don't know this stuff, but when it gets like below 10 degrees, it crunches. It kind of, yeah, that's how you know it's cold. So, I want to fire this thing up inside and get it so that it runs, and then we'll wheel it outside because we don't need that smoke in here, and then we'll fog it down. But it's really cold and it's dark, so I'm probably not going to film it. And then we're going to put this thing in storage. And then I usually make a label saying what this engine is, what it came out of, uh, what it needs, like a head gasket, carb rebuild kit. Probably going to use a tune up, and when it was run last, and what it, if it was fogged or not. So, for future reference for myself and 
you know, someday I'm going to have an auction. I'm not going to use all this stuff. And the next guy knows what it is. So I guess we should lie on it too. It's rebuilt or something. Not enough. In our estate. Like a journey. Maybe not. So we're going to do that. And you know what I'm thinking of using this in? I got a line. I think I already got it, but I haven't got it home yet. It's probably not going to be able to get retrieved until spring. But it's a 32 Dodge four-door sedan. Now hear me out. It's got pretty good patina on it. And so this thing was made into a pickup in, well, between like 41 and 46. During the war, they rationed gas. And you got more gas rations if you had a pickup. And people probably needed pickups as well. So people were doing it before that. So they moved the back of the car up to the front of the car so you know your back window is right behind the front doors and then they kind of left the sides of the car there they didn't put like a pickup box on it or make a wood pickup box like I've seen and they did a pretty good job of it and uh like I said this car's got some nice character it does have like an overhead valve Chrysler Dodge engine in it which is weird because I didn't I thought they only had the flatheads back then but I was thinking we could sneak this into there put like a four to eight inch rear in the back and I got some of them curvy, tubey, awesome Mopar tube axles. Stick one of those in the front. And uh, yeah, because it doesn't have a front or rear axle, I don't believe. Maybe the front axle is just missing. Because a lot of guys steal the front axles and make trailers out of them. Just weird, useless information for you. So that's what I'm thinking. We're going to put it in that car as a project someday. Really what's going to happen is I'm going to put this in the corner and trip over it forever and then pretty much give it away for a little or nothing because I'm sick of it or just throw it in the scrap pile. But yeah. So if you really need a Dodge Flathead 6, hit me up. I'll try to remember to put a price in the bottom. If you really need a 49 Dodge two-door car, hit me up because I really want that thing gone. Yeah, it's an eyesore. I have zero intention of ever doing anything with it. So we'll put a really great price on that thing. In the description down below, hit us up with an email, mortgagerepair at gmail.com. Also, check out the merch site listed down below. We got some really great stuff. Uh, holidays are right around the corner. You probably won't get them shipped by then, but you could give them as, you know, late New Year's gifts. Right? If you're not a Duff Approved member, down below, click on that. It's a few bucks a month, pretty reasonable. We got some behind the scenes stuff. We uh, announced when there's some discounts on merch. We just put up a video of doing some real works truck stuff with the uh, square body. And what else have we done? Oh yeah, some behind the scenes international metro stuff you guys don't know about. Some other stuff. So yeah, Duff would really approve of you being a Duff approved member and buying some merch for the holidays. But I think that's where we're going to wrap this video. And I'm going to have myself a Rhombus Guys Blonde Ale. Thanks to Rhombus Guys for hooking us up with some beer. If you're in the Fargo or Grand Forks area, go hit these guys up. Tell them Morsky sent you. I don't know if they'll give you a discount or not, but you get some real good pizza and some good beer. This beer is way too good for us. You want beer? Dog, dog beers? Dog years. In, in dog years, I've only... In dog beers, I've only had three. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, what, did, what did I forget to say? Okay. Duff says we need to move on to the next project or we're going to lose the shop.
locked down inline six flatted Mopar engine. All right, so here we are at the undisclosed location of said 32 Dodge. I'm not really sure on the year. I think 32. Bibbed Bandit will have to correct me. But she's a Dodge. You can see by the label. It's got dual cowl vents. It's got cowl lights. It's got that cool peaked body line on top of the windshield. It does need a windshield frame. Front and rear fenders are all there. No front axle, but the springs are there. It does have an overhead valve six in it with a updraft carb. Kind of a strange setup. Steering stuff's there. Had dual side mounts. These are the side mounts for the spares. For those of you that don't know your useless information. Yeah, and they were chrome side mounts. So this thing was pretty swanky. Three door hinges. And you'd see it was a four door. They took the back of the cab, moved it ahead. Likely for World War I for gas rationing. And you'd see where they welded the door shut. They did a pretty dang good job. I'm guessing they did that with a torch. And then they had some kind of latch system going on here for, I don't know, tying pigs in the back. I don't think this tanker was back there. Again, more of those tie downs. Most of the time they would just move the whole cab forward and then just make like a wood bed or maybe find a wood bed off of a actual pickup that was maybe worn out. But yeah, I just really dig this thing. So maybe drop that flathead in here and like I said, put an open drive eight inch in the back. I don't know if this is closed drive line or not. Yeah, it's some really strange drive line. Pretty neat dash in there. You do need to find a grill shell. So if you got a grill shell and a windshield surround for a 32 or 33 Dodge, let me know. Otherwise we'll have to make something fit. Front fenders are pretty rough, but we got a stump. We can bang those things out. It's got one of them there uh, Bluetooth starters. Not a lot of rust at the bottom of the cowl. There's a little rust on that door down there. Everything sat. Then we'd probably have to make up some kind of tailgate or something for the back. Or who knows? It's an old standard oil tank. Maybe leave that in there. Somebody even added overload coil springs in there. We're really loading up the hogs in the back. Just the way the elf from Guelph likes it. Well, we could maybe do a little bit better job finishing the back of the cab and stuff like that. They didn't want it to be too nice. I don't think they filled the roof in as well. What is that? A little ashtray? That's pretty cool. I just think that six cylinder would look really cool in here and it would kind of keep it along the theme of things. Only a diehard Dodge guy would even know that it wasn't the right six cylinder. Coast to coast spark plug. And I don't know what brand that is, but it don't match. Oh, it's a champion. Champion 8 COM. And then, like I said, I got some of those curvy, groovy Dodge tube axles, Mopar tube axles, whatever you want to call it. Oh, this thing even had juice brakes back then. So one of those should fit in there pretty easily. I'm guessing the steering box is still there, yep. So maybe clean that up, use that. Like I said, graft the windshield in, grill shell, knock some dents out. Find a radiator, easy peasy lemon squeezy. So let me know. Should we do that? This one might not be that bad of a project. Get that done in a month of Sundays. What else we got out here? There's old SpongeBob the binder. And the super rusty can't get a title for it. Duff! Rabbit! Squirrel! Mortski, mobile Mortski truck that, like I said, can't get a title. Too rusty. Hey, he just went, hey, he went that way. Get him. Goofball. And then we got a fridge for parts. The old mullet 74 Camaro that needs to be a donor for something. And I got this cool little international travelette crew cab. Maybe we should try to get that running, Duff. Another someday project. Unless one of you guys really needs this thing. How about that? Somebody just buy this thing from me. Do have a title for it. Little V8, four speed. Pretty cool rig. Dual headlights, I think it's a 62. Pretty sure. I got too much stuff, I don't even remember. What we got? 
Yeah, I wish I could get a title for that Dodge. And then it wasn't so stinking rusty. And then International, I guess. I'm just keeping that for parts for the other one. Unless somebody really wants that, because that can go too. And then we sold the cab off the $50 Ford. But we still got the frame, because it's got a 9-inch that we might need for the uh, orange four-wheel drive that the pinion turns and the axles don't. And this is the cab off of the one, oh no, that was a six cylinder, F600, F500, 59 Ford. Saving that, because I do have a fridge someday that I want to build. And that's a parts truck for it. That one's a parts truck for it. And then this is like a A-body GM subframe. That's what Puddin's got under his international. Came with some other junk I got. I don't know if we're gonna use that, but couldn't throw it away. You know, gotta save them all. We got too much stuff. Really don't need another project. All right, let's get back to the shop where it's warm. Get something done before we lose it. So we got this thing tagged and bagged. We got our tag on it, saying we fogged her down, date, that uh, probably should put a head gasket in it, carburetor kit, so on and so forth. What it is, what it came out of. For the estate sale, you know? In case we gotta sell everything to keep the shop. Also threw that split manifold on there so it can stay with this. I like to make carts for these so you can roll them around. Kinda like that small block Chevy there, but they don't make them for flatheads. And I ain't got time to make one. We gotta get onto the next project. So this thing's going into storage. Hopefully we can find some room for it. And uh, let me know down below. If you guys want to see this thing in a 32 Dodge, gave Duff a rawhide, so he knows what he wants. He is content. So pulled the fuel tank off, uh, stole that fuel fitting off in case we need that. I'm going to leave the plug wires on it. We'll probably end up stealing them off at some point. Put the air cleaner on. She's pretty much sealed up, ready to go. So... We did not get a 49 Dodge car running. Not our fault that it had a big gaping hole in the side of the block. But a kind of neat car, but not a neat car for us. But we did pick up a 46 Dodge engine. We got that running. Might have a possible project to put that in. But we're punching out. We're going to go on to the next one because uh, we didn't make any money on this one. We're going to lose the shop for sure if we uh, don't get something done here. So if you need this engine, if you want to see me build that car, if you want to buy a 49 Dodge car, that thing really has to go. I'll list it as information, price, so and such down in the description. Because that thing is an eyesore and I have no desire to own it. All right, we're getting out of here. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. It's pretty fun when they run, ain't it, Duff? You want to go for a ride? Just kidding. You can ride in the Bobcat while I put this in the storage building. The pallet should be well seasoned. All right, let's get out of here.